Welcome everyone and thanks so much for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Mary Ann Hensley. I'm the Vice President of Content Marketing and Media Operations for Freight Waves, and we are happy to present today's discussion in partnership with, Tur with our friends at Turbo. Today, we're excited to be hosting a discussion between Turbo's Director of Customer Success, Anthony Saratelli, and the co-founder of Veritas Logistics, Brian Hastings, about how Veritas has been able to accelerate growth over the last year while increasing revenue and shipment volumes in addition to expanding its team. Following their discussion, we will also be taking your questions live, so be sure to send those along as they come to you. And before we get started, just a couple of quick items. First, if you have any technical issues during the webinar, you can reach out to our team via the audience chat function in your webinar console. And as those questions come to you for Brian and Anthony, you can enter those through the Q&A box in your console, and we'll get to as many of those as we have time for following the discussion. And finally, we will also be sending a link to the recording of this webinar tomorrow in case you'd like to view it on demand or share it with your colleagues. And at this point, I'd like to welcome our speakers to briefly introduce themselves before we kick off our discussion. Anthony, would you like to go first? I would. And Mary Ann, when's the last time you've had two people from Ohio on this? Ever? I probably never. Probably never. You got to give a <laughs> shout out to the great state of Ohio. We always get looked over, so I'm using the opportunity. <laughs> uh, my name is Anthony Saratelli. I'm the Director of Customer Success here at Turbo. So I lead all the teams that manage the customer journey post implementation. So everything from the team of folks that manage frontline support to the team who's responsible for driving ROI and really deepening adoption of the Turbo suite of products. Um, I've been with Turbo for about three years and I came over from about 10 years on the brokerage side. So now I'm on the other side of the fence and I get to help our customers transform their business and I'm having a blast doing it. And I'm Brian Hastings, um, one of the co-founders here at Veritas Logistics. Uh, I've been in the industry since 2009. Uh, similar to Anthony, I worked at a big box brokerage uh, for, for roughly 10 years. And then me and my partner, we started this company uh, roughly three years ago, actually Last week was um, our three-year anniver three anniversary. Uh, we want to focus on maximizing uh, our employees and being the superior service partner that we can be. Awesome. Thank you both so much. So, Brian, to start with you, I'd love to hear a little bit about Veritas and your vision for the company, if you can tell us a little bit more. Yeah, so, you know, like I mentioned in the intro, um, me and my partner, we worked at another brokerage for roughly 10 years apiece, and we, we started this company a few years back uh, with the primary focus being around people. Uh, we want to focus on our employees, creating a, a culture and a community where they feel valued, they feel heard, and they're excited to come to work every single day. And that's one of the reasons why for us that we, we partnered with Turbo uh, is to have a superior technology product where they can maximize every efficiency that they can. Awesome. And so when it came to partnering with Turbo, what was it that prompted you to look for a new TMS? Well, I think there's, there's a couple things, um, you know, with, with this market, you know, how, how do we differentiate ourselves from the other 24,000 brokerages out there? Uh, for, for us, it's easy. Uh, investing in our people, investing in the technology, uh, creating, um, a, creating a, a scenario or a platform where we can help those individuals and maximize their time, uh, where they're not you know, doing mundane tasks and they can focus on the selling piece. Uh, I know, you know, with Turbo, you know, a big thing for us was eliminating the number of clicks with our previous TMS. Uh, there's several tasks that we can do within Turbo that create automation, and I'll go into that here in a little bit, but a routing guide is specifically one of those that, that I will hit on, um, you know, later in the show. We also want to be a transparent, collaborative partner uh, with our clients, with our carriers. Uh, and try to set ourselves apart from you know, the 24,000 brokerages that are out there today. 
And I'm sure when it came time, you researched probably several other solutions. So what was it about Turbo that really made it stand out among so many other solutions that are in the market today? Yeah, I mean, we, we did all the demos. We you know had five or six different uh, stages of the process. For us, it was something that, you know, we started the process, I wanna say uh, about 12 months prior to us pulling the trigger. And we wanted to see what else was out there. Uh, a couple of things that, that we loved within Turbo was, you know, the automation that I previously mentioned. We love that the telematics portion is inside the platform where we don't have to go and get a, a bolt-on feature or a bolt-on service uh, that ties into the, the TMS. Um, we love that the cleaner, you know, user interface. Uh, we love the, the transparent side of it where we can share a delivery link or we can share a link with our customers and they can track that shipment from pickup to delivery and we don't have to do the, the, the email exchange you know back and forth you know where's my truck uh what's the eta you know all, all that stuff uh we also you know it's something that, that doesn't get uh publicized quite a bit is we use it as a selling tool for our prospects we use turbo uh as a way and it, Turbo's marketing department has been great. Kendall, uh, she's been awesome creating different sales collateral for us so that we can go out there and sell to our prospects on our investment back into the technology piece to better service our client at the end of the day. Yeah, that's great. And Turbo is, is known for kind of continued investment into its technology that really kind of helps to create that ease of use and, and experience. So Anthony, can you elaborate a bit on that, about how Turbo invests in its tech and really building that roadmap for customers? Absolutely, Marianne. So, you know, we've always had a pretty aggressive roadmap and we do build a lot of products and ship it with regularity. But um, last June, we announced a partnership with Baygrove Capital and Lineage Logistics. And this year we've invested more into R&D than we ever have before. So. You know, the features, the product, it's going to keep coming. It's going to keep deepening from a feature set of what exists in an already deep suite of features in Turbo. Um, but I have to give some credit to our product leadership. You know, we have some product leaders that are driving our strategy to meet the industry demands for all the features of a world-class TMS or 3PL platform. Um, and we're going to continue to focus on leading the market when it comes to collaboration, right? The, the Turbo's DNA is all about collaboration. But I think moreover, when I think how we interact with our customers, Brian, we talked a little bit about this before we went live here. You know, Turbo is invested in the success of our customers and we win when our customers win. So we're always listening to our customers. Our product managers are out there in the field working with our customers to understand how we can improve the product. And we really believe and buy into the idea that this is a, a partnership. And we look to our customers to help us prioritize our roadmap and what's going to come down the pipe so that we're making this platform better and more usable to realize our vision of collaboration and, and digitization of the supply chain. That's awesome. Love that. Um, and, and Brian, for you, prior to adopting Turbo, what were some of the big challenges you and your team were facing? Yeah, so, you know, um, it's funny you ask that because it's, it's, it's tricky to remember a time but before the, that we were using Turbo. Um, we were on a server-based CMS system. Uh, it was pretty inexpensive. We knew that platform uh, initially. Uh, it, it was very, you know, user-friendly. At the same time, it was not going to give us the opportunity to scale. Um, you know, for us, those are the things that, that we want to do as a company is we want to grow and we want to build this business uh, where we're adding headcount in, and that might be in different states, that might be in different parts of the country, and that was going to be a little bit trickier with the previous CMS. Um, I, you know, we're always looking to maximize the efficiency for our employee, where they can spend less time uh, doing those mundane tasks, doing those uh, tasks that are not producing any revenue, and focusing on the tasks that do, whether that's building the client relationship or you know we always call it sinking our teeth into a client um you know a little bit more and, and making them a, a little bit stickier uh, that those are things that we want our salespeople focusing on as opposed to um the, the other tasks that i mentioned previously i think for for us 
that's that's a big thing where it, that was um, a trigger point was whenever we had the demos with Turbo and we were deciding on a, a TMS to go with the the cleaner user interface, the cl the collaborative platform. Uh, those are no-brainers, uh, especially with you know even the, with the delivery or the delivery links and the routing guides. Um, you know, and the routing guide is a piece where it's a it's a, a cascade or a, a waterfall type of carrier selection process. And as soon as you build a load or a shipment within Turbo, and you click the routing guide feature, it automatically automatically goes through those lists of carriers that you have, where you're not spending that time booking carriers or negotiating rates between you know the different parties automate if a carrier accepts the uh, accepts the offer that automatically gets a rate confirmation sent to them you get all the information uploaded in a turbo uh, and you don't have to deal with uh, the booking feature so to, to us that's a it's a win-win when you're talking about the automation of the booking process yeah that's awesome and how have you seen that to to help with client retention have you seen good results in that area yeah, you know, it's uh, it's something where our clients love it. We have one client that actually uses Turbo as their TMS, uh, and that for us is is the biggest victory that we can have just because we have one PO number, we're able to collaborate within the system, um, and they're able to send loads over directly from the platform, which is, you know, what Turbo is intended for, where you can communicate with that customer and you don't have to do the email exchange. You don't have to do the volleying back and forth. Um, you know, that, that's what makes it great. Yeah, that's awesome. And I want to talk a little bit about integrations and kind of the ability to kind of build around Turbo. Can you talk a little bit about your experience with that? Yeah, so uh, with, with the uh, Turbo's open API, we've been able to partner with a couple external um, uh, strategic partners. The first one is Green Screens. Uh, it's a dynamic pricing tool similar to a DAT rate view. Um, with that integration, there is a tile within Turbo. So you don't have to go outside, go to a separate tab. It's automatically within that load and it helps our carrier sales rep and carrier sales reps anytime that they're covering group freight or they're you know covering somebody else's load that you know might not be some something that they're familiar with. They don't have to go out and look at a rate and see what you know what we're trying to pay on a certain load. It's automatically within Turbo. It's on a separate tile. To me, that's that, that's an awesome partnership that we have with Green Screens, and we love the fact that it, that it can integrate right away. Um, same thing goes for Bitfreighter. Uh, that's a, an EDI partner that we have. Everything uh, has been somewhat seamless so far, and you know it's something that we're looking to add more and more clients on the EDI front. Uh, moving forward. And, and the last thing is DAT. Uh, with the, the integration with DAT, after, uh, and I mentioned routing guides a little bit earlier, but once you set up the routing guide and, you know, say none of your carriers select the, uh, the load, it automatically gets posted to DAT and you don't have to worry about that, uh, that function. So your rep is going in, clicking the routing guide feature, None of the carry, none of the three or four carriers accepted. It. it automatically gets posted. You don't have to go to an external site to do that. So for us, that's uh, you know we're all about trying to maximize efficiencies, and for us, that's uh, that's an awesome feature. Yeah, that's great. And Anthony, I'd like to hear a little bit about what makes Turbo so unique in the market, and one of those things being collaboration cloud. Can you talk a little bit about that and what? How does that make Turbo so different from others in the marketplace? Well, I mean, it's our key differentiator, right? I, I said it earlier that the DNA of Turbo or our ethos as a SaaS platform is all around collaboration. And that's, that's our secret sauce, right? It's bringing people, data, systems, all in one space where you can interact with your shippers, your carriers, your, your various supply chain trading partners all in one space. Um, you know, Brian, you touched on a couple things and I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk through this and I kind of wanna bring it back together and kick it back to you and talk yeah. a little bit about how, how this applies to your decision to come join the Turbo team, the Turbo family, and how it applies to your business and how you plan to grow. grow. Um, but we talked about automation, right? 
you named a couple features, routing guide, autopilot's one of the powerful ones, but yeah. I look out at the landscape in the industry and I see automation everywhere, even outside of our industry, right? Automation is all over the place. It's becoming not a nice to have, but an imperative. So we're gonna to continue to invest in deepening our capabilities to automate the workflows. But one thing that I think about with Turbo that is a little bit of that secret sauce is right in the title of this webinar. It's that customer experience. And for me, customer experience, user experience, they're, they're kind of parallel, they're almost the same thing. And when I think about how Turbo combines automation with a world-class user experience, what we're doing is really freeing up your people, your human capital, to focus on those value driving activities. And that to me, that's the holy grail when it comes to technology. And Brian, you've, you've mentioned this a couple of times throughout the start of this discussion, but you know, your strategy is, is investing in your people. And when I think about what Turbo is doing, it aligns so well with how you plan to grow your business, right? It's automate the things that we know we can automate so that I can invest in my people, so that my people can invest into our network and, and invest in that collaboration and truly change the game. So talk a little bit about that, Brian. How, how does that align to your strategy as a business? Yeah, um, I, I think you hit the nail on the head. I, I think for us, you know, we, we experienced great growth in, in 2022. We were able to add, I think it was 300% headcount, right? And, and with that, um, we used a lot of that headcount for support. So we, we grew a lot of business or a lot of organic business in 20, late 21, early 22, and we need to have support right away. So we hired those folks in, and then since coming on to, to Turbo, we've been able to increase our, our load count, increase our revenue, increase our top line sales with uh, the same headcount. I think we've added one or two people since then, but it's allowed us to maximize those certain efficiencies within our salespeople, within our carrier sales group, where we don't need to go out and add 10 more uh, bodies to do the same tasks. You know, from an owner's perspective, you know, that's what we want, right? We want to focus on those people that are in the room as opposed to just hiring to get bodies to support. So I think for us, those, those, are, those are attributes that we are, you know, very much aligned with. Uh, we're able to maximize each and every uh, employee, uh, you know, freeing up their time. Yeah, I love it. Right people, right technology. It's a, it's a recipe for success. I agree. Awesome. And kind of thinking more about that collaborative nature of Turbo that Anthony mentioned, Brian, how is that really changing your business? Yeah, I, I think for us, you know, we, we've kind of taken a, a staged approach and we're not even, we haven't even utilized all of the services that Turbo, Turbo offers today. Uh, I would say we're about 50% adaptive and we're using more of a gradual approach, kind of understanding the, uh, the certain systems within Turbo and then rolling those out to our different teams. So, you know, for us, as far as the collaboration piece, we have a handful of clients that are, that are on it today. And those are the clients that we have the highest retention with. So for, for us, it's how do we grow top line sales? There's two ways, new client acquisition and client and building those uh, certain customers that we have, you know, client retention. And so for us, any customer that we have on the Turbo platform, that business has grown at least 26% from the inception of going with Turbo. So that's the biggest factor that we see is, you know, 26% growth, even with uh, in, even in, in the market that we're in today, which, you know, we'll call a, a softer market. Um, and we've done that through the, the customers that have that visibility and that collaboration tool. Yeah. That's such a compounding yeah. effect, Brian. You're talking about, you, know, you made mention of adding headcount in 2022, but kind of being set for the go forward, at least in the short term, and you're maximizing what you're getting out of each of your individuals. And now you, you combine that with tech that allows for collaboration, that's unlocking more of that revenue stream, that's driving growth into your customer base. I mean, this is, this is exactly why we believe in collaboration in the supply chain space. Absolutely. Yeah, we feel like, 
uh, any time that you know a customer, you know, obviously you know starting to do, to do business with a client is is a big win. Is see, you know, and we're 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 seeing this now. But any time that we can get a customer that's assigned to the Turo platform, um, you know, we view that as another victory where we know that this customer is going to be around for a long time as long as we can continue to service them. Yeah, it's amazing. I think we're hearing a lot about, you know, what really kind of makes Turbo a differentiator. And I want to hear a little bit more, Brian, from you about, you know, that growth that you've achieved, you know, 26% growth in a, in a time when a lot of companies are, are really struggling. Um, how has Turbo really proven to be a differentiator for you guys? Yeah, I think, you know, we'll just, uh, I'll try to paint two pictures here. So previously our, our reps, they were doing track and trace, check calls, um, updates, you know, once they would get in the office from 8 a.m. until 9.30. Right, so they're an hour and a half, 90 minutes updating clients on the, the status of their loads, updating clients on the status of their shipments. Now, and, and we still have a handful of uh, brokers that are on the cradle to grave model, right? Uh, we have, it's kind of a, a mixed platform that, that we have internally, but uh, you know, with that, as far as the, um, the, the, collabor the collaboration piece from customers, 8 a.m. to 9.30, we were sending out updates to all of our customers. Now, that process has only taken, you know, 15 to 20 minutes. So now we're freeing up. I mean, we're talking about 70 minutes of our reps day, especially in the early morning, to develop that client list or to who are their top targets for that day and who are we reaching out to and who are we touching. Um, you know, that is, those are the two pictures. How are we freeing up time in the day? where you know we can focus on you know those revenue generating tasks um, you know that, that we want as you know sales managers or, or leaders mm -hmm. and what are some other ways that you feel like your business has really changed since you guys adopted turbo yeah I mean it's nothing so this is something that you can't really quantify but uh, even the, the buy-in from our group or our team, you know, the, the, the previous provider that we were having, it's, it probably was not the most aesthetically pleasing, right? And when we switch over to a cleaner user interface, uh, an easier to use platform, that, you know, the training is taken care of via, um, you know, videos and links and kind of learn at your own pace. They, they have a little bit different of a, of a mindset from that. Oh, these folks are investing back into us. We want to make sure that we're, we're maximizing this service and, and doing everything we can, um, you know, to, fill, to fulfill our roles. Yeah, absolutely. And Anthony, I'd, I'd love to kind of turn this back on you a little bit as well. We, we're hearing obviously about the partnership that, that you guys have with Veritas um, through Brian's eyes. I'd love to hear kind of from your perspective as well a bit about that journey and their approach to adopting Turbo and what's really stood out to you. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to kind of double click on what the experience has been thus far. And Brian, I want you to chime in on this as well, because obviously yeah, you know, sure. You're, you're living it from your side, but I've had the opportunity to go and, and sit down with the Veritas team in their office, and it gets me excited. Like, it gives me the the feeling like I'm back in it, and makes me. I don't want to say this too loud, but it kind of makes me miss brokering freight a little bit, a little <laughs> bit. But I I get to go and I get to I get to experience and taste and smell and feel the office, and it really is. It's genuinely fun, and then I get to know Brian and and Justin and hear about their strategy. And we've talked about it a little bit, right? There's an investment in, in technology. There's an investment in people. And those two things marry together really well on Turbo. And it's it's an investment in the customer experience. And it's really easy to want to like jump all the way to level 100 with this. And the one thing that I really, really respect and admire about the Veritas team is they've been very strategic about building out those stepping stones. And oftentimes in my role, the challenge can be getting our customers to accept that sometimes there does need to be some stepping stones to get from the crawl, walk, run. Mm -hmm. And um, it was almost like Brian and Justin presented that to us. They're like, we don't want to do too much too fast. We want to focus on the right things. Here's the, here's the big rocks. Let's go attack that. 
and they believe in their people. They believe in adoption of these things, and and it's it shows in their success. So we've been able to sit down with them, put together a success plan, and be really prescriptive about okay, what's next? Routing guide. Okay, what's next? Autopilot. Okay, what's next? And you know, while Turbo, it's a very wide and deep platform, and TMS just kind of exists as one thing within this greater collaboration cloud platform. And in order to get to realizing the ROI of the whole platform, you really got to start with the right things. And I, I can't give Brian and Justin enough credit for focusing on what those right things are and working with our team to actualize that. And again, like I'm having a lot of fun working with these guys. Awesome, Brian, anything you would add to that? Yeah, I think, you know, Anthony, thank you for saying that. I think, you know, the, the, the feeling is, is mutual. And I think for us, um, you know, even going back to the, the onboarding process, we had a phenomenal uh, rep, her name was Kimber. Uh, she was on top of it. And I think a lot, um, a lot has to be said for the people that we've dealt with through Turbo, right? Through Kimber and Steph and Anthony, they want us to, they want to bring us up to speed to, to help us out. So we're using more of that platform. I, I mentioned this earlier, but we're only using about 50% of all the capabilities. Uh, and, and we want to get up to, you know, we would love to be at the 80, 85% mark, you know, within the next year. Uh, but we know that, you know, Anthony said, it's very wide, very deep. Uh, will we ever get there to 100%? We're not sure, but that's something that, you know, we're striving to, to get to uh, at some point. Um, I did want to, you know, highlight a couple of things. Kimber was phenomenal as far as the onboarding side of it. You know, standing calls every two weeks, extremely responsive. You know, for us, we're we're running a brokerage. We're still you know, heavily involved in the day to day. Um, you know, we're we're still handling issues on the floor. You know, jumping in to sales calls, trying to to close business, and then even with the the standing calls with Kimber, we were able to take that and move the needle along the way where we could get up and running. Uh, with you know minimal hesitation, and since then, you know we've had an awesome rep in, in Steph Hallett, and she's been phenomenal as far as helping us get to that next step. And there are some some issues and some challenges that we face, and we've asked Steph for those, and usually that's not really in her scope or her line of work. And she's been phenomenal as far as helping us out, where to go, how to correct it. Uh, here's what we're going to do. Here's the solution. Um, so we've been very blessed to have two individuals as well as Anthony, where you know we feel like we're taken care of and helping us get to the level that we're at today. And and we're not even, you know, where we want to be yet. Yeah. And in you addition know, think, to go ahead. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Well, I just to bring that kind of back full circle to some of the things that Brian was talking about. You mentioned having a shipper that you saw was it twenty six or twenty seven percent more business from once they were in turbo, you, you have focused on the internal four walls for the most part. How do we use turbo better inside of the walls of Veritas yeah. so that we can then free up our people to go push turbo outside of the four walls to get more of those shippers that are bringing you 20% more business, take it from 20 to 30 to 50 and yeah. go find more of those and, and really push the collaboration all over your network. And that's the part where it gets to be really fun and exciting. Yeah, I agree. Definitely. And it sounds like you guys have a great partnership. And I'd like to hear a little bit, uh, Brian, from you about the role that Turbo Academy um, has had in helping you guys get employees up to speed quickly uh, with Turbo. Yeah, so I, I think it makes it, uh, the Turbo Academy um, is the training platform or is the, uh, is the side of it where when we do hire new individuals in, we send them a link, they're able to log in themselves, complete the courses that we assign to them. And this frees up a, a ton of time and money on the training piece. We're able to go in, we're able to um, assign those courses and then follow up with the new hire at the end of that, of that training. Um, so for, for us, we love the academy portion from new hires, as well as if we wanna backtrack a little bit when we were first coming on board, it was something that you know, we, it was a big shift. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's, uh, you know, leaving your old TMS, um, 
And, you know, it's a, I'll, I'll be honest, it's a little scary, especially for me, but it, it made it 10 times easier when we had certain courses that we could knock out, you know, during non-revenue producing hours, right? So knock out a, a couple a night, um, you know, and didn't have to do those throughout the day. Uh, that was huge for us just because we are running a book of business. We have clients to serve. Okay. How do I bring myself up to speed on these, um, on this new TMS or these new courses? So that's, that's huge for us. Great. And then Anthony, anything else that you'd like to add on Turbo Academy and the types of modules that you guys are able to deliver for your customers? Yeah, I'm Brian, you did a really good job covering that. Um, I just want to double down on it because I, I'm such a Turbo Academy evangelist. And when I talk to our customers, I, I, I push Turbo Academy all the time. As far as whether you're onboarding on the Turbo from no TMS, from an old TMS, or you're just onboarding new users, it, this is a tremendous resource that just comes with Turbo. And we have a team of folks that have invested their time in curating the content and building out um, a, a program of, the, of its own, right? It's, a, it's an LMS, a learning management system that is built by our own adult learning experts in-house to train users on how to use Turbo. And the curriculum is organized by role operator, accountant, admin, super user. It's interactive. You're, there's parts of it where you're actually clicking through little instances of Turbo. There's quizzes at the end. It's, it's just a tremendous digital resource. And it has a roadmap of its own. So that's another key thing that's important is that as Turbo evolves, we talked about continuing to invest in R&D and deepening the feature set and, and improving the product. Turbo Academy comes along with that. We're improving it every release cycle. We're adding modules and fine tuning it. And I just, I, I can't give enough kudos to the team of folks at Turbo that, that build and curate Turbo Academy. It's a fantastic resource for learning Turbo, for onboarding new employees and onboarding new users. Awesome. Thank you, Anthony. And then before we jump into audience Q&A, and by the way, we have one more question before that. So if you've not submitted your questions yet, feel free to do so through the Q&A box in your console. I'm seeing several good ones come through so far. So we'll take a good bit of time for those. But last question, Brian, if you could look into your crystal ball, where do you see your business in five years? Yeah, there's, uh, you know, when we look at it, we, we try to plan it as much as possible and in the vision, uh, the Veritas vision is, is what we call it, uh, five years down the road, you know, a couple things um, that we will focus on is low turnover for our employees, high retention by building that culture, building that community where people feel valued, they feel appreciated and taken care of, they're given the best technology available where they can do their job at a high level. Um, Second thing, we're always gonna be hyper-focused on new client acquisition as well as client retention. And with Turbo, that gives us a, uh, an opportunity to uh, deepen those relationships with, with the clients that we have today. Uh, we will always be willing to grow with the right type of people. We're, we're not just gonna add head count to, head, to add head count. We want to we want to focus on the right type of person that has the right mindset and mentality to join the Veritas team. And, and lastly, we are going to be focused on domestic over the road shipments as well as imports, exports, uh, and our global division. You know, as far as the, the drayage is concerned, that is an area that you know we are focused on, and we want to achieve uh, even more success with that in the next five years. Awesome. And then Anthony, any last thoughts from you as well? Well, when I think about where Veritas is going to be in five years, it really is around realizing that vision of collaboration. I think, you know, Brian, I hope you would agree with me that you're already starting to see the value and the return in this collaborative platform. And as we talk through your strategy around kind of getting the blocking and tackling down A plus grade, and then thinking about that next click up and then really empowering your team to work with your various shippers and trading partners to get them inside of the house, right? Get them into your tech. You're just going to be so sticky and it's going to be a launch pad to continue your growth story at an exponential pace. And 
I, uh, I'm looking forward to continuing to be a part of it and supporting the story. Awesome. Thank you both so much for the discussion. It is certainly inspiring to hear how you guys are continuing to grow at Veritas during a time that's proven to be pretty difficult for a lot of companies. Um, and I can't wait to see what the future holds, um, especially as you really can continue to focus on, on people. I think that's so important. At this point, we'd love to go ahead and take some questions from those of you listening in from the audience. So if you've not already submitted those, you can go ahead and do so. First question, let's see. What are the biggest hurdles or pain points since the integration, both for Veritas as well as your shippers? Yeah, I can go ahead and take that. I think that the biggest challenge um, was learning new habits, right? We have a TMS system that we use for years and years and years. And yeah, I'll be the first one to tell you, it's a little bit different uh, as far as the workflow and how to operate and where to go within the system. Um, after the first 30 days, it, it was a lot easier. Uh, don't get me wrong. There was a lot of, uh, um, you know, a, a lot of gritting, gritting my teeth uh, during those first 30 days, but it's just developing those new habits and knowing that it's gonna get better uh, moving forward. So I think, you know, to answer the question, it's just a, a level of developing new habits and figuring out, how, figuring out how to go and perform those tasks within Turbo where you can you know, maximize those efficiencies that, that we've been talking about the, the, the whole time today. And Brian, this is another chance for me to give you guys credit because it implementing a new TMS is really hard. It just, there's no <laughs> way around it. It is just, it is really hard and the change yeah. management aspect of it might be might be the hardest part. I mean, obviously the technical implementation is like very challenging, but the change management when we're living in a, a world as transactional as our world is, it's it's really yeah. hard to break old habits and learn new habits. And this is this is where it it has been so fun to work with you guys because you have embraced that strategic approach of Okay, I get it. I know it's going to be hard. Let's let's do one thing at a time so that we're not trying to boil the ocean. And and that's why you're having success with this. And I truly mean that. And I give you and Justin and the rest of the team a ton of credit for taking that approach and just grabbing the bull by the horns and and being ready to dive into it because it is hard. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. And next question, this one for you, Anthony. It says, what initiatives is Turbo taking to grow its shipper and BCO customer base? It's a great question. Um, so there's kind of, there's two things to it. And I'll, I'll go back to my answer around the roadmap, which is, you know, with our, our partnership with Baygrove and Lineage and our partnership with our customers, we're gonna continue to build a lot of new product and, and build it at a high quality and, and a world-class industry leading pace. Um, we do have customers that are shippers today that use Turbo as their TMS, but you know we, we talked about it being a wide product and deep. And you know we focused a lot on the TMS functions in this discussion, but there's a whole, a whole world of supply chain features that exist upstream from transportation and trucks and loads. So within Turbo, there's everything from appointment scheduling at a warehouse dock to inventory management, to purchase order and warehouse order management. So there is a suite of, of features and products that exist that supports more of the shipper and BCO market. But the short answer is we're gonna continue to invest in TMS and third-party logistics and supply chain features functions and ship it at a, a, a high pace. Cause we want, in order for us to realize this collaboration that we're already seeing that Brian's alluding to, we want everybody to want to be on Turbo, right? So we're gonna continue to build those features, deepen it, widen it, and keep going at the pace that we have been. Awesome, thank you. And this one, a good question for you, Brian. It says, if you could go back to the onboarding process, what would you do differently to help with the change management side of things? And how could Turbo have helped further in that area? Yeah, so I think uh, it's a great question. I think, you know, for, for us, 
it was we set a certain date that we wanted to go live and we had to keep ourselves accountable to that date right so you know with that question i think it's is there anything that we could have done differently um i think maybe roll it out a little bit sooner or you know i think a lot of times you're going to have 50 percent of your people that are going to go ahead and, and knock the the courses out and learn how to use the platform on a, on a regular uh pace i also think 50 percent of your people are going to do it at 11 p.m the night before when you know the cutoff is you know friday at 8 a.m or whatever so I, i'm not sure if we would do anything differently i think that we would try to push that or maybe um you know, push the adoption from an employee perspective uh, a little bit sooner. So how do we reduce that 50% of people or those procrastinators to have them get that done where we can pull that trigger a little bit sooner? And the question, you know, how could Turbo help? Uh, I think they, they did everything. I think with the platform and with Turbo Academy, they were able to, you know, put this in our face, say, hey, we know you're a brokerage. We know you have a million things going on, but here's what you need to do. We would get weekly updates from Kimber. Here's who's completed the, the courses. Here's who hasn't. Um, you know, even if that's one of us, one of uh, you know the leaders within our group. Uh, so you know, being able to, to knock those out in the evenings or you know outside of the hours between eight and five, I feel like was was a huge part of that. Um, just because, as everybody knows, we're we're trying to broker freight in the middle of the day and and uh, you know bring in uh, new clients and, and revenue for the company. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and the next question, I think probably both of you could speak to maybe Anthony, if you'd like to start and then Brian, you can add any color about your experience. It says, how does Turbo eliminate email exchanges? This is a great question. And I, there's a number of ways that Turbo can eliminate email exchanges. Um, there's an in platform or in app messenger. So, I, we actually have a customer that got rid of Microsoft Teams internally and went to only using the Turbo Messenger. There's um, other aspects. It's all about collaboration, right? And email is a way that we collaborate just because it's what we're used to. Brian, you mentioned offers and routing guide. That's one way to replace the traditional email that says, hey, I got a load, you got a truck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we can automate that. And that all goes right out of the platform to your carrier's inbox. So there's an interactive piece of that where if the carrier likes Turbo enough, they can work with you right there in the space and they can forget about getting those offers to their inbox. But from the standpoint of you as a Turbo user, those offers flow right out of the platform and come right back into the platform. It goes upstream as well. Brian, you have shippers and maybe you can uh, expand on this a little bit, but you got shippers that are working with you on Turbo. How, how does that process look when you guys are going to get freight or, and tender or receive tenders from them? Yeah, so anytime that we, you know, um, anytime that we do receive a tender, it automatically comes over with a notification within the platform and we can see it, you know, right there within, within our notification tab. So yes, we also get an email format of that showing that we've won a shipment or we have a load available that needs to, to be bid on, but you know, we could manage, um, we could manage without that email notification. Uh, I just, for us, we're not at that point yet. We're, <laughs> that's probably still some time to go, so. We're gonna get you to let go, I promise. <laughs> uh. Awesome. All right, next question. This is a bit of a boiling the ocean question for Brian. It says, what do you see as the biggest challenge in the freight industry today? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's, uh, I'm not going to mention, you know, double broker or broker fraud or whatever people call that, but that's that's one of them. Um, you know, the, the, the second thing for us is the transparency piece. Uh, how are, you know, when we look at the industry 10 years ago, right, 2013, how have we progressed from that? And what have we done over the past 10 years? Uh, it, it's the transparency piece, letting our clients and our customers and our receivers know where the driver or their shipment is at all times. How do we do that? How do we make that the, the mainstay or how do we make that the, I guess, the baseline in our industry as opposed to a, a nice to have or, um, you know, more of a, a luxury feature? To, to me, that needs to be the baseline. And I think that's something that 
uh, if we're able to do that, then the receiver can make decisions on inventory management. They can make decisions on, you know, for, for us, we, we deal with a lot of fresh food and beverage, um, you know, produce buyers. If they need to make a decision at the receiver and they need to buy that product locally because that truck's not going to be there for another, you know, 36 hours, well, they can do that. Now they're serving their local food service customers and they don't have to wait on this truck from California. So, you know, that that's something that, um, you know, biggest challenge, uh, it's, it's getting better. I mean, if we, if we look at a 10 year snapshot, it's uh, a lot better than what we used to be, but I still think we have some room to go. So transparency, collaboration, I, I think are huge. And that's why I think we, we partner so well with, with Turbo is because of the fact that we both believe in the same things. Awesome. Uh, and next question also for you, Brian, we've heard a bit about kind of the onboarding process. Can you talk a little bit more about what that looked like for you all in terms of resources, time, setting expectations, just any any additional color you would add there? Yeah, you mean like um, from onboarding onto the Turbo platform? Correct. Yeah. Um, so I'm a pretty... Uh, uh, I, I like to take my time with a, a few things. Like, yes, I like you know like to make decisions right away, but you know, a big transition like this from from one TMS, one habit cycle to another. Uh, for me, I, I wanted to have some runway. Where how do we how do we fill this in over time, and how do we have these checkpoints to learn the new system, learn a new way of doing things, and you know, figuring out the from the onboarding side of it. Uh, that, I mean, again, it is a scary task, but I do feel like, you know, the partners, you know, at Turbo with Kimber, you know, I think she's a rock star. Uh, she was our onboarding specialist. She was able to, to keep us in line and make sure that we were, um, you know, moving in the right direction. So again, I think, you know, for us, would we have been onboarded as quickly without Kimber? Probably not, right? So we, I probably would have kicked the can down the road a little bit longer, um, you know, my partner and myself. Um, but I think that's something that, you know, she did a great job with is having these checkpoints. Have you had this completed by this date? If not, we need to, you know, get moving on it. So I, I think that's um, from the onboarding piece. I think any TMS that you go with, it's going to be a scary process. Um, I only know, you know, one experience and that's from Turbo. And, you know, with the rep that we had, we were very blessed to, to have her. So, yeah, for us, it was it was very good. But but again, I mean, it's, we I've been in the, the brokerage industry for, you know, 14 years now. And it's, uh, you know, learning new habits is a, a little tricky. So. Awesome. And next one for you, Anthony, um, it says, what size brokers or 3PLs are using Turbo and can I benefit as a smaller broker? This is a great question. Um, the answer is that there are brokers, third-party logistics, shippers, carriers of all sizes on Turbo. We have customers that have revenues in the billions and we have customers who are small brokers with one person as a user. And the beauty of Turbo, the beauty of our roadmap is that the features that we're building are usable no matter what. And I'm, no matter what your size is. And I want to go back to something that Brian said kind of at the kickoff of this call. It's hard to believe we've been going for almost an hour. Um, <laughs> Brian, you talked about looking out at the landscape and how do you differentiate yourself from the other 24,000 brokers that are out there? And that's where I, I really believe Turbo allows companies of any size to be different. It's my belief that all industries are a people industry, but maybe no more so than logistics and supply chain. And when you have the right tech aligned with the right people, you are able to differentiate yourself in a market that is crowded with a lot of voices saying the same thing. And Turbo is a platform that allows you to connect and get sticky with your trading partners and really flex those people muscles. Yeah. Awesome. And then it looks like Go ahead. Go ahead, Brian. No, I was just going to say, I, I agree with that, Anthony. I think it gives you an opportunity. I mean, we've always said this, but, you know, 
people in technology and sometimes you know people pin them against one another and you're you're taking people out of a job to automate certain tasks and i think it's it's twofold i think the first piece is you have to have a certain type of technology to integrate with the, the brokerage business at the same time you also need those people behind that technology to make sure it's operating to its you know maximum potential to make sure that it's being fully at execution yeah. It's easy to look at technology as something that eliminates people. I look at technology as something that enables people to drive more value. A hundred percent. Yeah. Agreed. Awesome. And then let's see another here for Brian. What do you think is the biggest benefit you've seen since turning on Turbo? Yeah. I mean, I think that the biggest benefit um, has, you know, again, it's tough to quantify the ROI on an individual's time. But you know, we were spending 90 minutes in the morning updating clients and getting them the, their locations of trucks. Uh, whereas you know, now that's a 15 to 20 minute task. So we're putting 70 minutes back into our reps day where they can focus on sinking their teeth into a client or building that relationship or going out there and building up a, a client list or a shipper list or prospect list. And, you know, for, for us, my, my, myself and my partner, we're very uh, uh, A-type personalities, and we are very sales-focused, where we're con consistently trying to uh, develop new business all the time, as well as sink our teeth into to, to old, or to clients that we have today. Um, the second piece on that, you know, asking, you know, what's the biggest benefit? It's the, the ROI on uh, our people's time. Also... We're using we're using it as a selling tool. I mentioned this previously in the in the podcast or in the the show, but I think we are we're using this to prospect new customers. We're investing in technology. We're going to be around for a long time. Here's how we're servicing other clients that are similar in your space. So I, I think it's number one ROI on individuals' time. Number two, it's a, it's a selling tool to uh, to different prospects and customers out there. Awesome. It looks like that is all that we have time for for today. So I just want to take a moment to thank all of you for taking the time to listen in. Thank you to Turbo for partnering with us on today's presentation. And of course, thank you so much to Brian and Veritas and Anthony, of course, for being here with us today. As I mentioned earlier, we will be sending a link to the recording of this webinar tomorrow via the email that you use to register in case you joined us late or would like to view it on demand or share it with your colleagues. Thanks so much for being here today and we'll hope you join us for another webinar very soon.